Hey, good morning, my friends. M Live Chief Meteorologist Mark Torregrossa here with the M Live Morning Weather Update brought to you by Consumers Energy. And sorry, it's my job, it's what I see, but I gotta tell you, the weekend does not look real summery. And I'll show you why I say that. We have an upper level low pressure system forming over the Great Lakes. And eventually once that settles in, it's a cooler than normal, spurty shower type pattern. I don't wanna make it sound like it's an all weekend long rain, but it's five, 10 minutes. Oh, now the sun comes back out for a half hour, hour. Hey, not too bad. Then in comes a shower again, that kind of deal. So let's get on into it and show you what's going on. Prior to that though, we got some stellar, stellar weather. This is a week where, remember I told you, you should take vacation this week. Hopefully you did. Hey, good morning, uh, Karen McDougal from Glenny. And good morning, Melody Krostefan. John Miller, thanks for watching. And Denny Lynn Sr., good morning to you. So, satellite picture shows plenty of sunshine, and it should be a mostly sunny day for us. Let's get into the weather. Okay, so remember, if I'm on a desert island. Let's let's say let's say I'm the professor on Gilligan's Island, okay? And they say, "Professor, when will be the we've made this raft. When will the weather be right to get off this island?" If I get one map, I want the upper air chart. I want the 500 millibar upper air chart. That means everything on that map is the same air pressure, 500 millibars. And it shows us basically the mid-levels of the atmosphere. And this is where you're gonna see this upper level low cutting off over the Great Lakes and forming. And it's not a major storm, it's just not a signature for a really summery mid-August weekend. So let's show you what I'm talking about here. Okay, so, and we're gonna look at a couple of models and show you, they all show the same thing. So this is currently what the upper air looks like. And you see numbers on those black lines like 582. That means the 500 millibar surface is up at 5,820 5, meters, 15, 16,000 feet up or something like that. Hey, Drewy Robinson joining us, better known as Drew Robinson. So that means that it's a fairly warm atmosphere. And we go into Thursday, and you know I'm always looking for these bends in the jet stream where uh, you get, you get uh, showers. Uh, Matthew Myers, good morning. Thank you for going to South Haven Friday. How's it looking? We'll get into that. Friday is kind of a marginal day. Okay, now we're at Friday afternoon. And we go to Saturday. This is Saturday morning. See the circular storm center? That's an upper level low pressure center. What happens is you can have some sunshine in the morning, but as the heating of the day builds, hi Drew, um, as the heating of the day builds, you get instability because that pocket aloft is cold and it's unstable. And you get the spurty showers. And then as we go to Sunday, it moves to the east and it's a little cooler even there because you're fully into the north northwesterly wind. So something like that just is not a summery weekend. I'm sorry. Uh, we kind of had plans this weekend to pull the boat off of the Duck Lake and you know take it to the sandbar on torch. And I, I called it off. I said, hey everybody, this is not a weekend, a Saturday to pull a boat out early in the morning, try to spend all day on torch, uh, just not the kind of day. Now, look what happens again next week. This model is a good model. This is the European model, but it can be flaky out at 10 days. So we gotta probe this a little more. 
Good morning, David Fussell. Um, we got to probe this a little more. Do we believe this? But by the end of next week, it's got another one of these storm centers. And by the way, you know, this is a big, I hope you realize that this whole atmosphere thing and this job, this meteorology thing, is a big jigsaw puzzle. And what you'll notice is a ridge out in the Atlantic and a hot dome in the western half of the U.S. So what does that do? If you've got a ridge in the Atlantic and a hot dome out west, it puts a trough in the middle. You have to. You know, Can you take a jump rope and go like this and make bends in the jump rope without the other bend? You can't. So that's kind of what's happening is the Bermuda High Ridge in the Atlantic, pretty constant thing in the summer, is positioned just such, and the hot spell out west is positioned, positioned just such. <laughs> No, I haven't had any Bloody Marys this morning to give a trough in the middle part of the country. So anything that comes up over that ridge drops down in and wants to kind of intensify and deepen in. So it makes sense that this pattern looks like that. And I'm just going like, whoa, where did summer go? Well, the trend has been over the last decade that we get some of this in August and then we get rip roaring hot again in September. So don't think that summer is totally over. So here's the surface pattern on that same model and we got great weather today. We got great weather tomorrow. We've got a storm system approaching on Thursday. We'll look at that a little closer. So Thursday becomes a showery, thunder showery day. And then the upper low forms over us. Now we're into Saturday morning, and we're going to again look at this closer. Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening, you see the showery pattern around. That's what happens, okay? Uh, Netabop Reynolds likes the cooler, less humid days. Yes, it is. Um, Janet, going to Car Copper Harbor this September. Hopefully the weather will be nice. It can certainly be. And Ruth Goslin, Goslin don't worry. Uh, okay, so Sunday and then a couple of days break. And then remember, this model wants to try to put another upper low over us late the following week. We'll look at some a little more stable forecasts after this. And thanks for joining me. I'm MLive Chief Meteorologist Mark Torregrossa. And this is the MLive Morning Weather Update brought to you by Consumers Energy. We're looking now at the same model again. And, you know, we use the European because it's a good model. The U.S. model is pretty decent and it says about the same thing. So I don't have to show you a bunch of models. So this is Wednesday, and again, great today, great Wednesday. Can't find any better weather in summer than the next couple of days. Elliot Hubbard's planting the cover crops. There you go. Soil health. This is uh, Thursday afternoon into evening. So Grand Rapids, Kalamazoo, Lansing, Jackson, Ann Arbor. You get showery, thunder showery. Uh, sometime Thursday afternoon, probably Traverse City too, and Cadillac, and maybe eventually toward early evening it gets to Bay City and Saginaw and Flint and the Detroit area. And we go to Friday morning into early afternoon, still spotty showers. Friday afternoon, someone's asking about, I think it was Grand Haven, let's see, let's see, heading to Grand Haven Friday, we were supposed to be there this week, but had to reschedule for a dental appointment, okay. Uh, somebody was asking about boating at Grand Haven or whatnot on Friday. Friday's marginal, could still be okay, not great. You're probably going to have uh, some showers overnight Thursday night. You might have a dry Friday morning. You might have a spotty thunder shower or two Friday. Not certainly so, anything terrible. Now we go to Saturday afternoon. The upper low is over us, so as the afternoon wears on on Saturday, you get the spotty showers developing and thunder showers. This is Saturday afternoon into early evening. Note how it increases because of the instability of the heating of the day. It's still summer. Now this is Sunday morning into early afternoon and afternoon into evening on Sunday. North winds, clouds, 
showers. Uh, Elliot Hubbard, how much rain do you feel that Marlette may see this weekend? I would say this is a quarter to half inch rain. Might be some spots if you get into a couple of spurts of showers, you could get six or seven tenths, but probably half inch or so. And then we get into early next week and it, and it starts to warm up, it starts to clear out before the next system. All right, so here's what a lot of you like is the more concrete stuff. You like numbers, so today is great. Today is in the low 80s, low humidity. Tomorrow is fantastic in the low to mid 80s, low humidity. Thursday, um, we look at, you know, where the showers are. It's cooler in the 70s. Ahead of the showers, it's humid, it's warm. Friday, not so sure about this, you know, that warm in the southeast, but it certainly could be from Saginaw and Flint southward. Could be in the upper 80s while you have 70s as the cooler air moves in. And this is Saturday, and I think this probably depicts a little bit warmer of a feel than what it'll actually be. I would say, you know, 70 in the north and probably 75 in the south. So not terrible, but again, not a summer weekend. Uh, let's see, are they going to be racing at MIS, Becca Marker? I'm not sure when they cancel it. You know, it's more of a spurty shower thing, and MIS would have the least chance um, of rain on Sunday. Susan Curtis, is there a good rain for Higgins Lake on Saturday late afternoon having cookout? I would plan on a tent because it's spurty. It's, hey, it's fine, and then all of a sudden a five or ten minute downpour. So it wouldn't be the thing where I would want to have a wide open out cookout. Make the plan B already. Uh, have the cookout, but... You know, it's probably going to have to move into the garage or the shed or get a tent or something like that. Uh, and something like this, you don't get severe thunderstorms typically. Uh, then we go into next Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and again, it wants to do another upper, upper level low pressure system. All right, what do I have for you? Okay, all right, so remember, I told you, if I was on Gilligan's Island, you know, I wonder which one I would be. I guess I'd, I hope to think I'd be the professor. Um, and you know why? <laughs> that dude could make a radio out of like tinfoil and whatnot. Why couldn't he get him off the island? I just don't get it. Um, but I want that 500 millibar mid-level chart. So we've looked at the European model. That's a very good model. Now we're going to look at the U.S. model. It'll show you about the same thing. And we're going to look at the European and what's called the ensemble mode. So we're looking at the best, most likely Cert, uh, scenario, but it can be off when you get way out there. So the modelers tweak each model and run them 30 to 50 different tweaks and average those together. And out in the future, it doesn't give you the right solution, but it gives you a better idea of what more likely will happen. So that's what we're going to look at now is we're going to look at the U.S. model in this same 500 millibar thing. So does it say the same thing about Saturday? We take it to Saturday afternoon, and yeah, it shows the upper low pressure system. Now we know one thing about this model, the US model, the pitfall on it is it's too fast by about six hours that far out in the future. So the European closed the low off, slowed it down. This one is more of an open wave, but still the same scenario. North, northwesterly flow, unstable air. Early next week, it brings a ridge back in. Does it do a second cutoff low? Well, it does a northwesterly flow late next week. So a similar idea to the European. And then it does it again as we get to the following next weekend. Look at that. Northwesterly flow, you trace back the flow and where's it coming from? Central Canada across Lake Superior toward us. If this works out, 
if these cold spells work out, then that hot dome will take over. And can you see what I was talking about? The two ridges, one in the Atlantic, one out west, and that's why these storm systems are falling into the uh, weakness behind it. Now we look at the European in the ensemble mode. So this is tweaks. Um, Daytona, Denota, Bowman, is Flint Lapeer getting rain this weekend? Yes, you will get spurts of rain. If you add up all of the hours of rain in Lapeer and Flint this weekend, you're probably talking two or three or four hours of rain in the whole weekend, but they can come in 10 minute spurts several times. All right, so here is the European ensemble mode. Look what it does for the weekend. It does that open wave, cutoff wave, so all of its tweaks show that. Now, does it bring it back next week? It shows that northwesterly flow as we get to next Thursday. Now, what does it do as we go out 16 days? It warms the atmosphere some. Um, still a northwesterly flow, but not quite as cool. Wow. You got to admit, you just got a whole bunch of weather, didn't you? Did you ever ask yourself, did you ever get this much weather ever watching a TV weather cast, watching the weather channel, something else? No. So, hey, thank you, uh, Consumers Energy, for sponsoring us. Um, hey, Karen. Costamo, good morning. So there you have it. Great weather today, tomorrow, Thursday. We get into the showers and thunder showers. Morning in the west, afternoon or evening in the east. Friday mm, could be surprisingly better than what you expect versus what you're lousy phone apps are saying. And then Saturday and Sunday, it's not terrible, but it's not, let's haul our boat three hours somewhere and try to stay on a lake all day because it just probably will not be comfortable. 70s, spurts of showers, and uh, eventually a northwest wind about 10 to 15 miles an hour. Sorry, it's my job. I got to tell you that. So thanks for joining me on the MLive Morning Weather Update. I'm MLive Chief Meteorologist Mark Torregrosa. This has been brought to you by Consumers Energy, and you have yourselves a great Tuesday. Take care.